Hi, this is Dr. Thomas Rocco. I'm from Back to Basics Medical CBD Consultants. I'm here on a live Instagram uh, feed for more CBD medical education. Today's topic, we're going to talk about FDA review of uh, CBD and how they feel about um, controlling it currently. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the history over the last three or four or five years with the FDA, with the World Health Organization. Just kind of give you a little background about how CBD is viewed and updated by the uh, Federal Drug Agency, the FDA. So um, at Back to Basics, we've been very uh, involved with following the updates with the FDA. Um, just quickly, this is, they do a summary every year. They've started since 2015 looking at companies evaluating for CBD content and their claims, if it's proven or not, for uh, their substances. So they've done that since 2015. The last one was November 2019. In terms of uh, an updated review, um, that was done this year in March 2020. We're going to go over that as well. But just to start, um, CBD has been become very popular over the last five years, and I think that's part of the reasons for the reviews by the, the FDA. Um, and they've done very critical reviews, and it comes out yearly, and we follow them. We uh, deal with a handful of companies, and none of the companies that uh, we deal with uh, have been uh, had any written allegation of improper use or content of CBD in their products. So we really follow that closely. So it started around 2015, the FDA has been really closely monitoring the companies, the firms that have been marketing CBD. Um, the World Health Organization in 2017 uh, put out a statement and they concluded that they felt that CBD did not have any abuse potential. Um, they put that uh, statement out in 2017 knowing that in uh, 2018 there will be a more comprehensive critical review um, that they were going to do. And it's very interesting uh, what the World Health Organization said in 2018. Um, they really did feel that there was really no abuse potential with CBD. Um, they felt that uh, looking at models with animals uh, CBD f failed to substitute uh, THC. Um, it also felt that with uh, humans, there was no effects of any abuse potential or dependence potential. Um, they did recognize that there was one drug for severe um, rare epilepsy, Epidiolex, which is a CBD product that they felt that that was currently under review and approval, and especially in the United States. Um, they felt that uh, CBD was uh, tolerated with a very good safety provi profile um, and that there were some adverse effects with drug interactions between CBD and patients existing medications. I totally agree with that. We need to follow that for people that are taking CBD. We need to look at their medications and make sure that uh, the profile is proper and there's no interaction between CBD and the medications they're taking. CBD is metabolized by the P450 enzyme system in the liver. So we have to look at medications that are metabolized in a similar way. And we go over that with all the patients that ask us and want to uh, use uh, CBD for medical issues. Um, they also mention that there's no evidence of any recreational use of CBD or any public health related problems associated with the use of pure CBD. And again, this is from the World Health Organization Critical Review in Geneva in 2018. Um, what was also very interesting looking at this 27 page review was, you know, several countries have actually modified their national controls to accommodate CBD as a medicinal product. And we're talking about scheduling, what different schedules. Uh, United States is still put CBD as a Schedule I uh, drug, which is a, that, that level of scheduling is stated that there's no medicinal effect and only has abuse potential. So still at, at the United States scheduling level, we're still a Schedule I because it's associated 
with THC and cannabis. Um, I think that's a lot of the roadblock to more of the research we can do with CBD because of the scheduling of CBD still as a level one and affiliated with marijuana. So in summary, the World Health Organization really felt that there's no abuse potential with CBD um, and they felt that there is a good safety profile. But one thing, another thing that they mentioned, and I totally agree with this, is there's unsanctioned medical use of CBD-based products. So we're still using it in a way that we're kind of figuring out with our anecdotal evidence and experience. But again, I think that people with medical backgrounds need to help patients with CBD. It shouldn't just come from online orders. It shouldn't just come from um, places that don't have any patients with medical backgrounds. And I really do agree with that for the safety of CBD. So this World Health Organization r review, uh, again, 2018, 27 pages. I definitely agree with most of what they say. Um, and there's definitely necessary for more studies. So the FDA has been really good about being critically reviewing uh, firms that make CBD for the safety for patients. Uh, we follow this. Um, every year it comes out. It's usually at the end of the year. The last one was in November in 2019. Um, just recently um, in um, an updated review, was done in March of 2020, which we're gonna go over too. Um, so the major bullet points that the FDA really stressed was, again, there's only one approved CBD product as a prescription drug to treat two rare, several, two rare forms of epilepsy. Um, and it's uh, important to know that that is a CBD product that requires prescription to use um, and it's for specific seizure issues. Um, the other thing that uh, they mentioned is CBD is illegal to market as a dietary or a uh, food additive supplement. So the uh, companies that are marketing that way are the companies that got warning letters to state, you're stating that this CBD is not something that it's sanctioned. So those are the types of companies that are having these warning levels um, by the FDA. Again, the FDA does um, warn those companies for those two things, that you're marketing the wrong way and the content of what is stated in the product is incorrect. If it's too much THC in it, too little THC that they're, they're mentioning, um, or the CBD contact is higher than lower than they state. Um, the FDA also, again, needs more data to update its safety and risks. Again, I think the two major things, and this is mentioned um, in the updated review by the FDA, is um, that it is metabolized by the liver. And again, I think taking too much of it could cause liver injury, uh, just like taking too much Tylenol. The, the, uh, the issue with overdosing on Tylenol is liver injury. Same, same type of side effect. And the other thing that they uh, are concerned about is medication interactions with prescription drugs that patients are already taking. I totally agree with that as well. So when we talk about patients, talk to patients about their medications, we go over every single one. We look at a drug interaction uh, checker through Medscape to see if there's any interactions with those medications and to tell them to be careful with certain medications with CBD. One that, uh, that, is, that I'm always concerned about is Coumadin. With Coumadin, they are both metabolized at the same level, the same enzyme system in the liver, and what could happen is the Coumadin effect may be enhanced and your eye and arm blood testing will be increased. So those are the things, if a patient is on Coumadin, they either have to know that if they notice their blood levels are increasing, it definitely is the effect from CBD. It'll happen at higher effects, uh, higher doses of CBD, uh, but it's something just to monitor and make sure the patients are aware of this. Um, this uh, see, they also, the, 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 the other bullet point for the FDA report was also about, uh, again, 
firms and companies marketing uh, CBD products with unproven medical claims and again unknown quality. These are the the warning letter, letter, letters that uh, companies uh, might receive if their products tested and their claims are are not what the FDA approves um, and the content of the product is incorrect. Um, and lastly, what the FDA had mentioned and is that they are going to continue to look at the, the science, the safety, and the quality of CBD uh, products, um, and again, update the public as it learns more about CBD. Um, and it, this is a you know a good update about CBD for the public. Um, when you do read it, you get a little more concerned of taking it, and it doesn't sound as much as a safe profile as maybe the World Health Organization comments on it. Uh, but some of the roadblocks to CBD is um, it's, it's still affiliated with marijuana. It's still considered a Schedule One drug, and therefore there's less testing with, uh, with CBD currently. Uh, for me and my patients, I think it's very important that they get educated before they start taking it. Uh, they understand the dosing that they should initially start. Again, you should start at the low end of the curve. You'll have less side effects. Of, uh, of CBD, which is too much of the oil can give you, act as a laxative. Um, too much of the CBD, again, will, could cause issues with the liver and again, interact with other medications. Uh, the other thing that's important is, again, knowing your medications, what you're taking, and it does it interact with CBD or not. So those are the things that are important for the safety, not only knowing the initial starting dose, and what drugs you're taking, what to be concerned about. Um, what's also very important is making sure that the product is, is from a company that's reputable. Uh, and that's also very important. So when you obtain CBD, it's important to see if you can get lab results from wherever it's purchased. If they cannot show you lab results, then you're not sure exactly what's in the, the medication. So it's very important in terms, of, um, in terms of knowing what exactly is the CBD. With all the products that we have, we could give you the updated lab results to ensure you that it is quality medication and we know exactly the dose that you're obtaining when you use it. What was very interesting is they didn't mention anything about the different types of CBD with um, isolates versus broad spectrum versus full spectrum. I was very, uh, I was surprised that the FDA didn't mention that regard with patients understanding about knowing that full spectrum has a small dose of THC, which is less than 0.3% for it to be allowed to be bought without a medical marijuana license and that broad spectrum has CBD terpenes, but no THC, and that's pure CBD isolates have only CBD, no terpenes, no THC, and how that could affect people with drug testing, um, specifically for CDL licenses, for a federal job, for active military. Um, there was no mention of, of that for patients taking CBD and um, being concerned about drug testing with your employment. So that's one thing I think is very important more than anything else just for uh, an issue with drug testing. Um, and there was no mention of that in even the World Health Organization review or in the uh, FDA update recently in March of 2020. So it's something that you can find on the website. We actually have both the um, the companies that are warning levels to the FDA on our website, as well as the recent updated FDA report about CBD in March of 2020. So if you go to our website at www.bak2basicsllc.com and look under CBD Health, you'll see something written about the FDA um, updated. And in the article on the bottom of it is the links to both the companies that have been warned and as well as the most recent update in March of 2020 if you want to read through that as well 
but um, a lot of what they say I totally agree with I mean there's a there's a science and safety that's important to know about the major bullet points is there's only one CBD product Epidiolex that's for severe two rare severe forms of epilepsy um, if CBD is marketed at something like a dietary or food additive that is incorrect that's not something that that should be allowed um, the FDA obviously needs more data to update safeties and risks but again I, un I agree with them with knowing that it is metabolized by the liver it um, has interactions with medications that people that take so those are important to know about that and what medications you're taking so we go through all of those with patients that take multiple medications to make sure they understand that there's an interaction if it's an antidepressant if it's Coumadin if it's a hypertensive medication so those are things that are important about using CBD is knowing what medications interact with that um, CBD products um, again are are marketed with unproven medical claims with unknown quality of the CBD that's why it's so important to know what the lab result is with every CBD product that you buy if you cannot obtain that with where you purchase it I would be reluctant to buy it there uh, those are all available through our website um, with uh, either uh, looking on the website or getting or calling us and we can mail it to you um, the interesting thing about the FDA is what they really want to do is they want um, to treat CBD as a drug that's their top priority is you know protect the public health and at this point they'd like to investigate the new you know use of CBD like any other drug and use it through a drug approval process um, and as it says here the FDA is committed to setting sound science-based policies for CBD uh, currently there really isn't any right now but uh, we follow them very closely in what they have to say I do agree with a lot with what they have to say um, and it's about safety um, and proper use and proper dosing using your proper dose um, will make your side effects much less um, quickly on dosing for patients what's important is the way I describe the dosing is by C um, CBD milligrams CBD oil milligrams which is the endpoint of of products of CBD it can be also be described as hemp extract oil which is the amount of flour used to make the CBD it's always a higher number some companies use that number to make it look as if you're buying more but the way we describe it in terms of dosing initial dosing is CBD milligram oil so for anxiety to start a good dose to just start is about 15 to 20 milligrams for pain it's a little bit higher and it's about 20 to 40 milligrams to start depends on the severity of the pain depends on the weight of the patient and then for sleep to start it's 50 milligrams of CBD oil so sometimes you start at 50 and you can sometimes need as much as 150 milligrams again these sound like high doses but they're really not they're at the low end of the spectrum because people that take it to prevent seizures take more than a thousand milligrams a day without any side effects so I think when you start at that low dose for anxiety for pain for sleep and you may have to increase it we're at we have a high ceiling to go to the side effects um, I are usually very rare with my patients because we start at such a low dose and if the low dose works it's great um, not only does it work but the it costs less but if we have to increase the dose we'll increase the dose as we need to um, and again it's important to know when you are taking a medication is it a full spectrum medication which has THC in it which could be present on a drug testing or is it an isolate or a broad spectrum CBD product which does not have any THC in it and you'll be free of any drug testing issues with THC if you ask me I truly believe that full spectrum work be better by studies that I read but also patient experience because the THC 
and the CBD do have an entourage effect. They have a synergistic effect because they work at the, the CBD, CB1 and CB2 receptors that work as a synergistic manner. But if you're somebody worried about drug testing, you take the isolate or broad spectrum medications, which sometimes require a little bit of a higher dose. So I think CBD is, has some concerns. Uh, I think the FDA has the right concerns with safety, uh, drug interactions with medications they're taking. I think it's important to know that the liver does metabolize CBD, so you need to know your medications that are, that are metabolized by the similar enzyme system. We go through all those with all of our patients to make sure they understand exactly what they're taking and what to be concerned about in certain medications. Um, I truly do believe that we do need more testing of CBD to help us understand exactly the dosing. Um, as a physician, I, I feel that you should talk to somebody with a medical background to understand how to use this properly. Um, I think that not, again, the, the, the statement here about from the World Health Organization about unsanctioned medical use, to me that only means, not only means the, the companies that are selling it are not really, uh, but also people that actually retail it. Do they know what they're talking about? Um, do they understand uh, the medical background behind CBD, how it works with the endocannabinoid system? What dose you should start with? Uh, which, which is better? Which is a better intake for certain medications? Better with a capsule? Is it better with a tincture? Is it better with a lotion? Um, so I think when they talk about unsanctioned medical use, I think that means companies saying the wrong thing and I think that's retailers not being educated in how to uh, understand how CBD works and how it works best for patients not only uh, the intake but is there medication interactions um, are they at higher risk for uh, liver injury somebody who has cirrhosis somebody who's jaundiced um, from whatever medical illness should not be taking CBD. Um, if you have any questions, you can always call us at 401-678-6420. A lot of this information is on our website at www.back, that's B-A-K, number two, basics, llc.com. Um, we could be reached either by phone call, text, and we're also at customer service at backtobasicsllc.com as well if you want to email us. Um, I hope this helped. There's a quick review on the World Health Organization's reviews as well as the, the FDA review. Um, as more information comes, we're going to put it on the website and follow uh, their recommendations and updates. Um, I think we're going in the right direction. It's a slow process, uh, especially in this country, but um, but if you want to do it safely with a proper dose um, and worry about any types of side effects or interactions or, side, or any other issues with uh, CBD, please call us. We're here to do it safely with a proper dose um, and do it medically with people that have backgrounds in medicine that can teach you how to do this properly. Thank you for your time. Uh, please contact. Please contact us at any time. Thank you.